Hey guys, it's Yvette and I am here with my large, um, I think this is the Bewitched. Yeah, Large Bewitched Name of the Rose Puzzle Mystery Quilt for Cotton Cuts. And I am ready to put this clue number six together. Um, so I have my instructions here. I have all my pieces. When you get your instruction sheet, you will have um, a little list on the bottom that tells you all the pieces that you should have in your pack. And I do have all my pieces. Um, the other thing is you will have a drawing of the, uh, the clues that you are going to be finished with at the end of this instruction sheet. So all of the instructions are on the back. And hey, let's go. I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to scooch that over for a little bit. And again, we are on um, clue number six. So we are going to be working first on section 6A and then on section 6B. So let me just kind of scooch everything over a little bit. Sort of get it out of the way. So we have a space to work on. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make two half square triangles. We are going to, oh, I forgot my cheat sheet. Hold up one second. I'm always forgetting that. <laughs> it's very important. So when you get this at the beginning of, um, at the beginning of the mystery quilt, you want to make sure that you keep it in a very safe spot because you're not going to get this again. And, um, this way you'll be able to know which fabrics you are using. Um, you know, each mystery quilt, um, small and large, has, you know, a number of um, fabric colorways that we are working with. So in order to be able to use this sheet for all of the puzzle colorways, they... Um, label all of the fabrics by a letter so you know which one you're using. Okay, I have got cat hair everywhere. Do you guys see me like constantly trying to get all the cat hair off? <laughs> it's a good thing most things lately have been, I'm just sewing for myself. Um, okay, so with that right there, we are going to take two of the A triangles and two D triangles. So that's these two guys here. And I have two A's and then two D's. If I can get them apart, that'd be a good thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the A's are going to go to the top right. And I always double check to make sure that I have them the right way because I have um, one of the clues where I sewed the white ones on backwards or upside down or whatever you want to call it and honestly like you couldn't really tell I just left it <laughs> and um so the d's are going to go on the bottom left now we're going to make these into half square triangles so I'm going to flip them right sides together and we are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance here and here Okay, so we have our first two half square triangles, and I'm going to put those aside for just a moment. Oh, I just wanted to let you know that um, we were told to press toward fabric D, so we pressed toward this guy. Okay. All right, so now we're going to need two of the fabric D and two of fabric F. Okay, so I'm going to take F and I'm going to put it to the bottom left and the D are top right. I'm going to take them and I'm going to flip right sides together. And we will sew a quarter inch seam allowance here and here. Okay, so I have the second set of 
half square triangles. And we were also asked to press toward D, which is this fabric here. So now I am going to, um, okay, we're going to be making two, um, two pieces out of all of this stuff. So I'm going to put these here and then I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them on this side. And then we're going to take a rectangle D, which is this guy. We're going to take two of them and we're going to place them in the middle like so. Okay, so what we're going to do in this instance is we are going to um, combine these um, here. So we'll just turn these right sides together and we will stitch a quarter inch seam allowance here and here. After we do that, we will press that and we'll come back and we'll attach these like so. We'll mark, put it um, right sides together. And we will sew a quarter inch seam allowance here and here. Okay, so we have these two long rectangles that we have put together, and we are now going to attach, I'm going to put these because we have a, a, a long piece that we're going to attach to the bottom, and it's going to be an F rectangle. Let me move that out of the way for a moment. Okay, so what I like to do whenever I am connecting two pieces and, oh, I know what I forgot to tell you guys. Um, we pressed both of these seams toward the middle, okay? Just to let you know. Okay, so what I like to do is when I have one piece of fabric that is just one simple piece of fabric and I have um, the other side where there are some seam allowances, I will always put the piece with the seam allowances on top. So I'm going to fold this right sides together this way. And the reason I do that is so that whenever I am sewing, um, I'll be sewing on top here and I can make sure that all of these junctions like lay the way I want them to and don't get like run over by the needle and then bunched up and I'm sure you know what I mean. <laughs> So that's how I do it. Um, so then we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance here and here. Okay, so we have these two pieces, and these are our pieces for section 6A. So these are done. We can go ahead and stack them up, and I made a little card. And yes, I do have alphabeties, but with all the numbers that we have to use, and then the A and the B, there's too many, like, A and Bs. I, I, would, I would have to have, like, you know, 100 packs of alphabeties. <laughs> So I just, I just kind of make these up. It's no big deal. Um, okay, so I'm going to put these aside for a bit. And now we're moving on to section 6B. Um, the first thing we're going to do is make a uh, flying geese. And the large triangle in the middle is our D fabric. So it's this one. And we are going to make four of these. So I'm going to have one... Two, three, and four. 
Okay, and for the left side of the flying goose, we are going to put, oh, actually both sides, we're going to put the small A triangle, which are the white ones. So I'm going to take those and put them to either side. Okay, so then what we're going to do first is, I always like to work on the left side first. I'm going to move, uh, or I'm going to turn these down, right sides together. And we are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance here, 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 and here. Okay, so we have the left side of our flying geese all set, and now we just want to add the second, uh, or the right side. And the reason why we want to make sure that we put, and it really doesn't matter, left or right, you just want to put one side on first, then do your pressing, which in this instance we pressed toward the A, um, the small A triangle, which is over here. Um, and then once you get it pressed, then you want to come back and add the second side. And that's because the um, top portion of this small triangle is going to overlap um, the first one. And that's what you want to do. That's what's going to give you that point right at the top. Um, and so that's why you do it that way. So we're just going to turn these right sides together. And we'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance here, 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 and here. Okay, so we have our first set of the flying geese, and we're going to go ahead and set these aside. Oh, we did press um, toward the other A fabric on the right. Okay, so I'm gonna move those over, and then we are now going to make another set of flying geese, and this one is gonna start with a large triangle of fabric B, and we're going to make four of those again. And then on the left side, we are going to add a small B triangle. Okay, so we will do that. And then on the top right, we are going to add a small D triangle. Okay, and like I said, just for, um, you know, uniformity, I always sew down the left side first. So we are going to turn these down, right sides together. And we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance here, 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 and here.
Okay, so we have sewed down the left side of the flying geese, and now we just need to take the other side, fold them down, or flip it over right sides together. And now we're going to sew our seam allowance here, 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 and here, and that's a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I have finished the second group of flying geese, and now we are going to make four uh, pieces that are gonna be like um, long rectangles. And the way we're going to do that is we'll take this last group of, and this is fabric F, nope, this is fabric D. <laughs> so the last four rectangles of fabric D, and we're going to place them between these two sets of flying geese. Um, and there's really no way that I do this one way or the other, other than I would make sure that this um, piece will fall, fold over onto this one, since I want the one with the seam allowance in it on top. And after, so basically we'll do it like this. We'll take it, we'll flip it over, right sides together. We are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance there. We will then press this, and it looks like they want us to press um, toward the D rectangle. And then after we have um, sewed those together and then press them, then we'll come back and we'll take the one on the bottom and we'll flip that one right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam allowance here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have finished these last four pieces, which are going to be our section 6B uh, pieces. So we are just going to put these together. And I made a little, this little label for 6B. And so I have 6B and I have 6A and I have my little cheat sheet and I want to put them in my containers. Let me get that. Oops. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is I'll take my sheet and put that in and my pieces and I'll make sure I leave my cheat sheet on top so I can get it out easily next time. And we are all set. Um, so that is my Name of the Rose Bewitched Large um, Puzzle Mystery Quilt. This is clue number six. And I want to thank you very much for sewing along with me. And I'll see you guys with clue number seven. <laughs>